besties so welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is grace welcome lovely to meet you um so for today's video i thought it'd be fun to do like a weekend reading vlog like have all the fun book content just in one video because i love all of you and you guys deserve the best but yeah it's currently friday march 3rd it's like 5 30. nolan and i just got back from his soccer game which was like an hour away but since it's been storming really badly like all day the one hour commute turned into like two hours so we've been literally been gone since like 10 a.m and we just not got back so i thought it would be fun to do my march tbr to get this vlog rolling and she is very ambitious okay I'm a little worried that I'm not going to be able to get through all these books, but like we have to have goals in life, okay? So yeah, plus I have spring break, so I have like a whole week of just reading. So maybe I will be getting through all these books. We'll see. The first book on my TBR is By a Thread by Lucy Score. I recently just read my first Lucy Score book, um, Things We Never Got Over, and she is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. I've already started this book and I'm 80% through. I've read a lot of it today, actually. I started at the beginning of the week, but I haven't been consistently reading it up until now um, because I was at Nolan's soccer game for like two hours and then the commute there and back was like two hours. So I've had a lot of time with By a Thread, okay? It is a Grumpy X Sunshine, Enemies to Lovers, Slow Burn, Forbidden Love, um, Workplace Romance. And she is amazing. I honestly did not expect to love this book as much as I am right now. Um, highly recommend if you were a fan of Enemies to Lovers because the slow burn and the tension buildup of this book is amazing. It's so good. It's about Dominic and Ali. Dominic is a creative director for this fashion magazine that his family owns. Very much Devil's Wear Prada's vibe. Love it. But basically, Dominic is just a big old grump, and he gets Ali fired at her job at a pizza parlor. And his mom offers her a job at the company. So... Yeah. So the second book is From Luke of With Love. This is by Mariana Zapata. I bought this in February because I thought it was a hockey romance because of the ice. Because I don't know anything about books. I see them on my Instagram and I'm like, oh, people are liking it. I'll buy it. <laughs> That's all I need. All I need is for someone to tell me, hey, this book is really good. Maybe you should read it. And I probably will. So, but it's about a fig, it's about figure skaters. It's a figure skater romance. Mariana Zapata is known for her slow burns. I haven't ever read a book by her, so I had to pick one up. The third book I have is Things We Hide From The Light, which is also by Lucy Score because I just love her. This is the second book in the Knock Em Out series. It, so rude, okay. It focuses on Nash, um, Knox's brother, younger brother, and Lena who is introduced in the first book and she's like Knox's ex-girlfriend slash friend I think I don't know but I'm really excited to read this um I literally broke my book buying ban so I could go and get this book um yeah super excited it was recently released I don't know if I mentioned that but like you guys probably know you probably have seen this all over Instagram because everyone was posting about it nonstop. That's why I had to go to Barnes and Noble and like break my book buying ban for her, okay? And she's just so pretty. I'm a sucker for pink books, okay? I'm a pink girly through and through. Okay, so the next two books are part of a series. It's Consider Me and Play With Me from the Playing for Keeps series by Becca Mack. These were gifted to me by a friend on Bookstagram. Love you. Um, Super excited. These have been on my TBR for like a while now because everyone, everyone has been raving about these books and I've been feeling a little left out. I feel left out of the hype because I am a hockey romance girly. I am in my hockey romance era. So when I was gifted these, I just knew I had to read them in March because I cannot wait a second longer. Okay, I've been dreaming about these books 
for months, okay? So excited. I don't really know anything about them. I just know that they're hockey romances and they're good. So that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. The last book on my March TBR, which I don't know if I'll get to because she's kind of low on the totem pole, but it's Twisted Hate by Anna Wong. This is the third book in the Twisted series. Um, not that there's anything wrong about this book or anything. It's just I have other priorities this month than this book, but if I get to her, I'm gonna be happy because I'm slowly making my way through the Twisted series. I read Twisted Games in January and she was a five-star read, loved that book. I just know this is about um, Jules and Josh. Jules is the girl from the first book. I can't remember her name, but she's the best friend of Josh's sister and Jules and Josh hate each other. So it's enemies to lovers. And I think it's friends with benefits or frenemies with benefits or something, but yeah. She's also on my TBR. So that is my entire March TBR. I think it's a total of six books. So technically not that ambitious because I read eight books in February and February is a short month. So maybe I'll get through all of these, but they're really hefty. That's what I'm kind of worried about. I don't really have any like small 300 page like easy reads. Um, so yeah. Let me know what you're planning on reading in March. Hey book besties, it's update time. I finished By a Thread and I love this book. Lucy Score just writes the best grumpy men like ever. And I am a sucker for grumpy rich men. The fact that this man's love language is gift giving and acts of service just speaks to my soul on a different level. Just so good. The enemies to lovers, the like build up, the forbidden love aspect is just so good. Just, oh, are you getting up? Ooh, big stretch. Oh, okay. You gonna sit right there? You want to sit right there? No? Okay. Bye. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? You want to sit right there? Okay. But yeah, Astra, my reading buddy, also really enjoyed this book. She kept giving me the side eye when I was like giggling and laughing at things that were going on. I just... Uh, I just love this book so much. Honestly, the like build up tension and like witty banter part was probably my favorite. I think at that point I was like, oh, this is like a five star read for me, which is kind of odd because I don't think people would normally look at this book and be like, this is a five star extra. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Back to what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted. Yeah, Ashra, I'm looking at you. So I think the tension buildup and like the slow burn, enemies to lovers, the witty banter really made me think that this was going to be a five star and it honestly was up until i got to the miscommunication trope third act breakup kind of thing i knew it was going to happen just because um things were going too well okay like things were going smoothly for them so i knew something was going to happen i just wasn't in love with the conflict that arose um just because it felt like it came out of nowhere and it didn't feel organic. I think if this book did that trope differently, like did the miscommunication third act breakup differently, this would have been a five star for me. But I think overall, this is a 4.5 star. It literally has all my favorite tropes. The enemies to lovers was so good. 
And it wasn't like, oh, hee hee, I think I hate him, tee hee, but he's so hot. No, it was, I literally hate you and I'm disgusted by the fact that I am attracted to you. Like, an unhealthy hatred. And that might be toxic of me for saying that I love that, but I did. It was so good. It gave Mr. Darcy vibes. If anyone likes Pride and Prejudice, which they talked about so much. I was like, period. Period. Mr. Darcy, love. Yeah. Highly recommend that you get this book if you are a fan of slow burn enemies to lovers, workplace romances. Even if you're just a fan of Lucy's score and like want to get into her writing, like it's just so good. The moment that I was like hooked was... Hold on. Was around it was around like 185. And this is not a spoiler. Um okay. Ah! That literally had me floored. I had to call my friend McKenna and like scream just because I just just, this man has a chokehold on me. Lucy Score writes amazing men. It is the next day, March 4th, Saturday, and I am 50 pages in to Consider Me. I started it last night and I read it a little bit this morning, but like nothing too crazy. Um, it's dual POV, it's a hockey romance. It's about Carter and Olivia. Carter is the team captain of his hockey team, the Vancouver Vipers. So he's in the NHL and he is a playboy. He only does one night stands. He doesn't do relationships, that kind of thing. And Olivia is a relationship girly. She does not do one night stands and she is not falling for Carter, no matter how hard he tries. So, and Olivia is best friends with Emmett's girlfriend and Emmett is Carter's best friend so she's kind of like off limits for him so yeah I really like it the banter so far is like astounding I just so good I'm also in the midst of like annotating it so I figured I would like kind of show you guys what I use to annotate because people have been asking and everything that I'm like talking about will be linked in my description in the description because I have an Amazon storefront and I have like little lists of what I use to annotate, my five star reads, what I use to film and like take pictures, like things like that if you're interested. But basically I am using these tabs. I don't know the brand. I just like got them off of um, Amazon, but I chose blue because duh, I need a color code. I need to, I need to be on theme, okay? And I have like a little annotation guide. This is normally what I do. I usually have like cute, funny, um, sad, important quotes. And I have like different tab colors for all of them. I really hope like this is focusing because I can't tell. My vision is so bad. Um, but yeah, those are the tabs I use. I really like them. So yeah. And then for highlighters, I'm just using one color. Usually I use different colors depending on the tab color, but since all my tabs are blue, I was like, I might as well just highlight everything in blue. And it's just these kind of highlighters. It's Mr. Pen. I don't know, I really like them. They don't really seem to bleed through. And as long as you like use it light handedly, like it's pretty nice. And then I'm just using a gel black pen again. They will be linked in the description. I have the pens that I use. It came in like a pack of all these different colors. And most of the time I do change up the colors, but I wanted to be simple because I'm trying not to spend too much time annotating just because I want to get through this book as quick as possible, to be honest, because I want to read the second one. And the weekends are kind of the only time I read. So I have to make up for lost time. So I am a hundred pages into Consider Me and I literally have like a permanent smile on my face because of this man, because of this fictional man. I, 
Yeah, Carter Beckett is not for the weak. He will just charm your pants off. I just love him so much. I already love that like 100 pages into the book, we're already seeing character development from him. I honestly didn't know what to expect from this book, but this book is exceeding all the expectations that I didn't know I had. Like, it's so good. I just love it so much. Like, let me just let me read you one of my favorite things. This is on page 97. So I guess I need to work on changing her mind, give her a reason to trust me. Even if it's slow and takes all damn year, I'll be her friend first and I'll be good for her, for Olivia. We love a committed man. Uh, literally had my heart soaring. Read this. Go to Amazon and freaking add this to cart right now. I'm not even like halfway through it or anything. I'm only 100 pages in, but I'm telling you right now to go and buy this book because she's just so good. She's everything and more. And I'm only 100 pages in, so... So good. I have a birthday party tonight, so I don't know how much more I'll be reading. I wish I could just stay home and like binge read this all night, but I have a social life. I can't just rot in bed all, all day. That's so unhealthy of me, but just so good. So it is the next day and I apologize for looking like a mess. I feel like a mess. I'm so tired, but I am 200 pages into Consider Me. I didn't really read any more of it last night um, from the last clip. I literally filmed that clip, got ready for my for my friend's birthday dinner, and then came back super late. And I just knew my brain wasn't going to focus on any words on a page. So I just went straight to bed. But yeah, I read 100 more pages today. I don't know if I'm going to finish it this weekend just because I have some things to do, um, homework and stuff, because... This upcoming week is my week before spring break, so I don't really know if it's going to be busy or not. I'm trying to prepare myself, but I really love this book so far. I love Carter so much, and there's also a character named Garrett in here, and whenever I see his name, I always think of Garrett Graham, and I'm like, no, this is a different hockey series. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really love it. I'm annotating like crazy. I'd hate how long my tabs are, but I'll probably cut them after I'm done. It's just easier to make them long because I feel like when I make them short, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is too short, like things like that. Whereas when I cut them, I'm like, it's done. Life hack, by the way. If you like short tabs, but it's hard for you to like make them like, what's that called? Symmetrical or whatever. Just cut them, make them long, and then go cut them after you're done annotating. It's the best. I do it for all my books this, so far, but yeah. So it is a lot later than when I filmed the last clip. I ate dinner, took a shower, all that jazz, and I'm about 260 pages into Consider Me, and Carter Beckett is giving me like a million reasons to love him. Like, we love a committed man. We love a man that is so honest and like open with his feelings and is just willing to put in the work. He is putting in the work. And you know what? We stand. Because as much as I love the like grumpy guy main character, I'm also a big sucker for Golden Retriever boys. Like I love how goofy and just how cute he is. Like, his bluntness is adorable. The way he rambles, adorable. We love a man that is able to communicate his feelings. Love it. If you like Golden Retriever type boys, Carter Beckett, ladies and gentlemen. Carter Beckett. I'm about 300 pages in, and I just had the biggest ick. It wasn't from Carter Beckett, because that man could never give me an ick. He is a masterpiece. Um, but what is her name? Olivia's niece, Alana. She's like a child or something. I don't know how old she is, but 
like 10, I want to say. And there was this part where she was doing a little dance. And they're like, I think it's that viral TikTok dance, the f flossing. Ugh. What an ick. Yeah. I hated that. I hate when, like, books try to be cool or, like, try to be hip and, like, trendy. Like, we don't need that. We don't need that. Like, I'm trying to forget flossing was ever a thing. You don't need to remind me about that, Becca Mac. I just had to share that. If I had to read that and experience that ick, so did you guys. So. So it is the next day and I finished Consider Me. I loved this book so much. Hockey romances just like fuel my soul and this was a masterpiece. Immaculate, so good. I absolutely loved Carter Beckett. His character development throughout the book was amazing. I lived for it. He is just the blueprint. Okay, he is everything. I just loved how he went from like this playboy, like one night stands, no relationships to trying to learn how to be the partner that Olivia deserves and like how to be in a relationship and how to love and like communicate your feelings. That's another thing I also really enjoyed was the emphasis on like communication within a relationship. It was just so good. I love seeing healthy communication in books because I feel like with the whole miscommunication trope, like third act breakup stuff, I feel like it's very common for characters in books to just like keep things inside and like, and then one day it's just like all blows up in their face and like blah, blah, blah. And they just like isolate each other and ice each other out and like don't talk about their feelings enough. Whereas this book, yeah, it did have a miscommunication trope and I, th I think a third act breakup technically, but it literally lasted five seconds because Olivia and Carter, like healthy adults, communicated their feelings and got back together. It was just so good. Um, Carter Beckett is the definition of a golden retriever boyfriend. He really reminded me of Nathan Hawkins um, from Icebreaker because Nathan Hawkins also gives me golden retriever vibes and I just, I live for it. Like I do like the grumpy, I don't talk about feelings, toxic kind of guy in books, which is probably bad of me, but I also love golden retriever boyfriends because they are also top tier. I also have a special place in my heart for them. Um, yeah, just love it so much. I also really loved the side characters. Hank and Dublin were definitely my favorite duo. Love Hank. Him and Carter literally had me cracking up so much throughout the book. Their friendship and like their relationship was so heartwarming. Just love everything about it. Um, I literally can't wait to start the second book. I'm pretty sure it's about Garrett and Lenny, Carter's sister. Um, which is not a spoiler because I'm pretty sure the second book is out already and they were really hinting at Lenny and Carter. I hope that's her name. I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's Lenny. And yeah, love this book. Highly recommend. It was a five star for me, but I will say one thing that I did not like about it was how Alana or Elena, um, Olivia's niece was written. I'm really wary about books um, that have children in it just because I feel like they're not written very well like ever. I just like it makes sense because you're a full-grown adult trying to write children and sometimes it just comes off kind of weird. I'm pretty sure I talked about this but there was a part in the book where her niece was dancing and Carter was like I think she's doing that TikTok dance the flossing or whatever and it literally gave me the biggest ick. And I just couldn't get over it. Like, yeah, her and Carter were very cute. I just, like, love the Uncle, Uncle Carter vibes. But I just couldn't get over that one part. And she kind of ruined it for me. So, yeah. But despite that, it was a five star. Highly recommend. Absolutely love hockey romances. If you're just now getting into hockey romances, would recommend. This was so good. The banter that Olivia and um, Carter had was 
chef's kiss. Absolutely loved the attitude Miss Olivia was giving off. It's not enemies to lovers. Like, this is definitely not enemies to lovers. But I would categorize it as, like, maybe dislike to lovers or, like, frenemies to lovers. Because there's always that, like, playful flirtation. Um, whereas I feel like in By a Thread, which is pure enemies to lovers, there's, all, like, they had, like, that disgust for each other. Like, the, that angst whereas this was always like kind of flirty and light banter um so yeah highly recommend read consider me i'm gonna start the second book soon so yeah i also have um a full in-depth in um review of this book on my bookstagram currently dot overbooked if you want to go check that out i post daily so if you want to see more of like updates on what i'm reading Go check that out it's linked in my description so so that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you read consider me or buy a thread leave a comment down below because i would love to fangirl over these two books with you guys um if you have any recommendations for like videos you want to see in the future or you just want to like tell me about your current read like feel free to comment anything i love interacting with all of you it's honestly one of my favorite parts of my day um if you want to see more of my face feel free to subscribe i try to post book videos like every week sometimes i post like twice a week it just depends on how busy my schedule is because i am a full-time student but spring break is coming soon so i have a lot of fun videos planned and you don't want to miss out so subscribe um give this video a like if you enjoyed um subscribe i think i already talked about that I talked about my bookstagram, link in the description, currently not overbooked, I post daily, I post reels, book updates, all that jazz. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.